you know, it's very easy to quantify transactional profit, or generally much easier than it is to quantify relational profit, right? Or the the investment of creating a better relationship and what what's that going to produce? And I know you say that transactional convenience has become a commodity. So right. wh- what do you mean by that? And how does that you know, affect the decision making in organizations? Yeah, yeah, very good one. And, and an important one, I think, because if you look to the last 10 years, um, companies started to differentiate themselves on digital convenience and technologies like mobile, 4G, social enabled that. Um, but today, that is like the most natural thing in the world. If you have a good digital interface, it is seen as the most natural thing in the world. So people are not positively surprised. The only thing that can happen is if you don't have it, then you have these extreme difficult processes where people have to go through that you have a negative surprise. So it's no longer a differentiator. It has become the norm, a new minimum, a commodity to have digital convenience and to have transactions that are just very, very easy for for the user. And it's mainly big technology companies that enabled that and that made that happen. So the question is, how can you differentiate now in terms of CX? And I I see two dimensions, and those are two dimensions that I played with in in my new book, The Offer You Can't Refuse, where I believe you have to create emotional convenience, where it's no longer just about the customer journey, but also about the life journey. And, and, And I see it like this, Adam, it's like, Every consumer has a movie of his or her life in in their mind eh? and they have dreams and hopes and things that they hope will happen, things they hope that won't happen. It's a matter of understanding that the human behind the customer and then proactively solve those issues, taking into account that time, money and energy are scarce resources of people. If you can save out energy by proactively removing the fears and proactively helping people to achieve the goals, then you can make a difference. And, and this doesn't start from a transactional process. This starts from the life of the customer, of the consumer. And then you start to build upon that. I think that that's one dimension where you can make a huge difference. And the second one um, is about using the strengths of your organization to add value to global challenges. If, if you look to the world right now, we have a lot of things on our plate. We have uh, COVID-19, healthcare related issues linked to the economy, obviously, we have climate, we have um, discrimination, racism, that's on the table. We have tensions between East and West. So there are a lot of things on the table. And what you see is that customers expect companies to deal with that. There's a higher level of trust in business leaders than in government leaders. And I think we're going to see this flip from consumers asking companies to be authentic towards consumers asking companies to take their responsibility, use their own strengths to become part of the solution of some of those global challenges. And and that's what I mean with creating an offer you can't refuse. Uh, Of course, you need a good product to attract customers and a good price and and good service. You need digital convenience that is almost the ultimate convenience. And then you can become a partner in life. And then it's about changing the world with your own strengths. And if you combine all these elements together, that's what I call creating an offer people can't refuse.